A very good afternoon and welcome. This is News First Lunchtime News. Before we start off the bulletin, here's a look at the top stories today. Steps taken to transfer biodegradable waste collected in Colombo to Muthurajavela. Risk of dengue in Kurunagala increases. Microsoft warns ransomware cyber attack is a wake-up call. Leaders' Roundtable Summit of the Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation gets underway in China. On to your local news now, the Land Reclamation and Development Corporation notes that steps will be taken to transfer biodegradable waste collected from Colombo to the proposed compost project in Muthurajavela. Chairman of the corporation, Asela Idavela, notes that the transfer of this garbage will commence today. He added that a sum may need to be charged in order to cover the management costs of the project. In other local news, heads of states and government and international organization officials arrived at the Beijing Yankee Lake International Convention Center, the main venue of the Belt and Road Forum for the International Corporation to attend the Leaders' Roundtable Summit. A total of 29 foreign heads of state and government are in the Chinese capital for the forum, which also drew hundreds of heavyweight international organizations, such as Secretary General Antonio Guterres of the United Nations, President Kim Jong Kim of the World Bank and Managing Director Christine Lagarde of the International Monetary Fund. Chinese President Xi Jinping welcomed attending leaders including Russian President Vladimir Putin, Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte, Indonesian President Joko Widodo and Turkish President Recep Erdogan. China has touted what it formally calls the Belt and Road Initiative as a new way to boost global development since Xi Jinping unveiled the plan in 2013 aiming to expand links between Asia, Africa, Europe and beyond underpinned by billions of dollars of infrastructure investment. For today's uh, roundtable discussions, we saw the participation of 29 leaders from around the globe and uh, also several world organizations which included the United Nations, UNICEF, IMF uh, and also various other institutions. President Xi Jinping making the opening remarks at day one of the conference stated that 124 billion US dollars will be used for the allocation of One Belt, One Road initiative. But the question is, how is this money funded by the Chinese government? Well, I was able to talk uh, to the uh, head of uh, the Vice Director of Development and Reform Committee of the One Belt, One Road initiative, Mr. Wang. What he told us that, well, they are aware as to how they will be funding some of the 124 billion US dollars. But the question is, how will they fund the rest, which is uh, unknown thing even for him. Well, that is what he had to say. Well, we have more updates coming your way. We will see you again at 9 tonight on our primetime news bulletin. Signing out for now from China on the One Belt, One Road initiative. I'm Joel Outskun for News First. Thank you, Joel, for that update. Microsoft says that a cyber attack that has hit 150 countries since Friday should be treated by governments around the world as a wake-up call. It blamed governments for storing data on software which has vulnerabilities which could then be used by hackers. The latest virus exploits a flaw in a version of Microsoft Windows identified by and stolen from US intelligence. There are fears of more ransomware attacks although few have been reported so far. Many firms have had experts working over the weekend to prevent new infections. The virus took control of users' files and demanded $300 payment to restore access. Experts have said the spread of the virus slowed over the weekend, but the respite might only be brief. More than 200,000 computers have been affected so far. South Korea said just nine cases of ransomware had been found, giving no further details. Australian officials said so far only three small to medium-sized businesses have reported the lockout of their systems, while New Zealand's Minister of Business said a small number of unconfirmed incidents were being investigated. Well, this is a type of uh, malware that is worldwide in uh, system called ransomware. Now, ransomware essentially is where uh, malware comes into your system, encrypts the data, and basically you don't have access to your own data. And then you are told to pay ransom. So first of all, you must not uh, pay the ransom. And you must actually contact your IT department uh, for an organization. You must contact your IT department and uh, make the necessary action. For 
general public and individuals all i am saying is please update your operating system please update uh, all of your applications your office applications all of that please update them and please keep them up, up to date because this is relatively an old patch that was discussed but that was discovered and exploited worldwide so the best course of action for the general public would be to ensure that your systems are updated additionally please in- ensure that all of your in- important data is backed up in sources in disks in cds or in a portable disk or any other measure that you can take to back up your data in the event that such measures occur some valuable advice by asel abai dilankara the pakistan national who was arrested in khatnaika along with 973 grams of heroin has been handed over to the anti narcotics unit of the khatnaika police under detention orders this was after the suspect was produced before the nigambo magistrates court the 34 year old suspect who arrived from dubai had concealed heroin in his shoes Staying in local news, the Ministry of Health has decided to divert staff from hospitals in the Kurunagala district to the Kurunagala Teaching Hospital. According to the director of the Kurunagala Teaching Hospital, there are over 100 dengue patients receiving treatment at the hospital, including 10 staff members. He noted that steps have been taken to clean the premises of the hospital. Kurunagala is a dengue risk zone. By 7 a.m. today, there were 188 confirmed dengue patients and a further 56 suspected dengue patients receiving treatment at the hospital. A special dengue eradication unit has been set up to curb the spread of the disease in the hospital. A motor accident in the Modra area in Koskoda claimed the life of an individual this morning. The incident took place at around 7:20 a.m. According to the police a 57 year old individual attached to the Costco to police as a laborer died when he was run over by a lorry the driver of the lorry has been taken into police custody A 14 year old novice monk of the Madamalo Vihari in Onegamo Polonnaruwa has been assaulted by an unidentified group According to our correspondent the attack took place at around 7:45 p.m. yesterday. The injured Thera had been admitted to the Polonnaruwa hospital for treatment. Police have launched investigations to ascertain the cause of the attack as well as to nab the perpetrators. An individual was injured in a fire that erupted at a house in Modra. The fire services department said that four fire engines and an ambulance were dispatched to contain the fire. The fire was contained this morning. Meanwhile, the fire services department said that a fire had erupted at a building belonging to the tourist board located in Kolpiti this morning. A spokesperson at the department said that two fire engines had been dispatched to douse the fire. Now police in Galewala have been able to uncover a poaching ring in the Galewala area that operates in forest reserve. The Galewal police launched a raid in a forest reserve located in the Kurala Kahagol area and were able to apprehend one suspect. A stock of venison as well as a locally manufactured firearm was also taken into police custody. The suspect is due to be produced before the Dambulla Magistrates Court today. And that's a wrap of lunchtime news for the news first team. I'm Ramesh Rugal Bandara. Join us again at 155.